All right, so now that we've installed the DHP server role using PowerShell, let's run through how to create a scope using PowerShell, because PowerShell is the bomb. So the first thing we'll go over here is, how, is the initial creation of the scope. So I'm using the add DHP server v4 scope commandlet. And this is part of the DHP server module. So you need to make sure you either have that installed uh, through the RSET tools if you're working on your workstation, or if you're on the DHP server, it's installed with the management tools. So I've got all the parameters of this commandlet right above it inside uh, what's called a PowerShell splat. The parameters that I'm specifying here are the name of the scope. So in this case, I'm being really boring and descriptive and calling it my corporate scope. And then my start and end range. So the first and last IP addresses that the, the scope will be handing out, as well as my subnet mask for that scope. And you will notice that I'm not handing out the first and last addresses of this subnet. And that's just so that I can have some addresses available to me to use as uh, static addresses uh, elsewhere. And if you needed to get out a subnet calculator, don't worry about it. I did that too. <laughs> so then the state uh, just specifies whether or not that scope is actively handing out addresses. And so active, it means it is. Inactive means it isn't. And then for the least duration, it calls for a time span. So I'm using the new time span command out there to create a one day time span. So then we'll create this scope. And we can validate that that scope exists using the get DHP server v4 scope and specifying the scope ID. And the scope ID there is just the, the network ID of that subnet. And there you can see that we've got our scope created. So if you're familiar with the GUI, you know that the GUI runs through a few additional steps as well. And we've actually got to use some different commandlets in PowerShell to achieve the same results. So to set the exclusion range, uh, we use the add DHP server v4 exclusion range. And the parameters that we need are specifying the scope ID, so that same value again, and then the start and end range of that exclusion range. I'm just excluding 10.3.0.1 to dot 20, uh, just so I can have this first, the lowest numbers as available to me for static addresses. And then if we want to validate that exclusion range, we use the git DHP server v4 exclusion range commandlet, and of course specify the scope ID. So there you can see our exclusion range that we just created. So then to add the gateway to that network, which of course you want to be doing if your network is going to be routable, uh, we use the set DHP server v4 option value. And this lets us set up all of the different DHP options. Uh, but for the gateway in our splat, you notice that I've got the option ID of three. So the option ID of three just specifies the router address. So the value there is the address of my router. And of course, the scope ID is the ID of my scope. We'll go ahead and run that and then we can validate that that was created using the get dhp server v4 option value and specifying our scope id and the option we want if you don't specify the option id this will just return all of them i just want to look at just this one so we can validate our router so there you go and you notice that the value the 10.3.0.1 that's inside of curly brackets and that just means that that value could have multiple values in it so then to set the dns servers which is Pretty important if you're working inside of an active directory domain like I am. Uh, we use the set DHP serve v4 option value again, uh, but this time I've got the scope ID in my parameters and I've also got the DNS domain and the DNS server. And you notice for the DNS server, I've got two values there that are separated with a comma. That's because I've got multiple DNS servers. So what and create this. And it actually goes out and validates that those DNS servers exist and are DNS servers. And then once it completes, we can use the get DHP server v4 option value commandlet and look at that scope and see those DNS settings. And there you go. And this time you notice that I didn't specify an option ID. And so we can see all of our scope options so far. And so then we can edit some of the other settings of the scope as well. So if we want to just look at the scope, we use the get DHP server v4 scope commandlet and specify the scope ID, of course. And there we go. We can see some of the, the basic settings that that scope has. So if we wanted to set the lease to something shorter, for instance, so maybe we wanted a 12 hour lease. So here on line 68, I'm creating a new time span of 12 hours and assigning it to the lease duration variable. And then we use the set DHP server v4 scope commandlet to change that lease duration. In this case, we're specifying the scope ID. So the same scope ID we've been using. And then the lease duration parameters, what we use to change that lease duration. And then we can use the get DHP server v4 scope commandlet again to validate that setting. And so there you go, we've got a 12 hour lease duration now.
And if we wanted to disable that scope so that it is no longer handing out addresses, we use the set DHP server v4 scope, specify our scope ID, and then set the state to inactive. And then we can validate that using the git DHP server v4 scope commandlet again. And you can see that the state now is inactive. We want to remove that scope. We don't want it anymore. We use the remove DHP server v4 scope commandlet. And of course, we can uh, validate that it no longer exists using the git DHP server v4 scope. And we get a red error. And in this case, that's what we expected. So that was good. So that's how you create and manage a scope on your DHP server using PowerShell.